Hi there, this is Adrian. I'm a marketing specialist at Life Webinar, and I'm thrilled to guide you today in setting up your first event on our platform. First off, I'd like to take a moment on behalf of our entire team to express our heartfelt thanks for joining us. Please remember that you can reach out to us anytime via email at support at lifewebinar.com. If at any point you want to revisit this quick run through, there's good news. This session will be recorded and we'll send you a link to the recording once we wrap up. Now, let's get to the main point of our meeting today. Once you log in, you will see the user dashboard, the command center of your webinar platform. From here, you can easily plan your first event. To get started, click on the green schedule webinar button on the right side of your screen. You'll see a screen that's all about setting up your webinar room. On the live webinar platform, you have three types of rooms at your disposal. The first one, which we'll discuss today, is the scheduled webinar. It allows you to arrange your meeting in an advance and prepare an appropriate promotional campaign. It's an inexpensive and efficient way, say for generating new sales leads. Other options include a permanent room and an evergreen room. We'll cover these types of events in our next course installment. To schedule your meeting, start by giving it a title and add tags if needed. Event tags allow you to label your meetings to make them easier to find. To make the most out of this feature, choose a short label that matches your future events while you're setting up the meeting. For instance, if you're hosting a marketing webinar, label it as marketing. This feature is particularly useful for companies hosting a large number of online events. Tags will help sort them out and the search function on the event management panel will quickly find those covering specific topics. Next, start, set the start date and expected length of the webinar along with the time zone adjusted to where most of your participants are based. Then decide on access to the webinar room. In the next step, create the event agenda. It's a really straightforward thing with the text editor, which is similar to the popular tools like Microsoft Word. You can use text formatting tools, insert graphics, links, and other similar options. Once you're happy with your setup, hit the schedule button. Congratulations, you've successfully planned your first meeting. However, this is not the end of the personalization and settings options for your first webinar. On the screen that you see right now, you have the opportunity to make additional modifications that will allow you to create an even better event. Here is the details tab. In this place, you see a summary of the most important information, such as name of the room, its ID, and the webinar address. Later, you can also provide participants with phone numbers, which can be used for direct connection to the meeting. This is a particularly interesting option for people with poor internet access. Another important element of this page are links for presenters, moderators and participants. If you want to give someone direct access to a particular role at the event, such as a presenter or moderator, all you need to do is copy one of the following links and provide it to the person who is to perform this function during your webinar. To enhance the webinar and better manage roles, you can assign a presenter before the event starts. And you can do this in the Presenters tab using the Add Presenter button. However, remember that when creating the first event, you need to create a new presenter profile. After clicking the Add New Presenter button, a panel similar to the profile menu will open for you. At the beginning, you fill in the presenter's personal details. Here, you should fill in all required fields that will represent this person. You can also put his picture, as well as additional information, such as website, phone number, or short biography. After creating the presenter profile, return to the Rooms and Events screen. Click on the three dot icon on the right, right side of your screen next to the name of your planned event and return to the meeting edit. By clicking on the presenters tab, you will now be able to assign a presenter who will be present at your meeting. Remember to confirm each change using the update button. The next key aspect of your first event is the registration form. You can find it in the registration tab. If this is your first event, you have to create it from the form from the scratch. Start by naming the form and adding a short description. This step is especially useful when you have many registration forms. Thanks to this, you'll easily identify what function a given form performs 
and at what stage of your marketing strategy it should be used. Then, customize the content of the registration form by adding appropriate fields. You have full freedom here. You can decide on the order of the data fields and whether this is a mandatory or an optional field. In the next episode of our course, we'll also teach you how to integrate the form with marketing automation tool or CRM systems. However, let's focus on the basics for now. Confirm the changes using the update button. It's important to remember that here you can also set the date for the end of registration for your event, as well as the limit of people who can register. This is important if you want to have full control over who will be able to see your live performance. Another important function is reminders. You can activate them using the slider and set the time intervals at which they should be sent to registered people. You can add additional time intervals using the blue Add button. When the notification structure satisfies you, confirm your changes by clicking the Update button. Aside from the option of crafting registration forms, there's also an Appearance tab at your disposal. This nifty feature allows you to create your own sign-up pages and thank you pages after the event wraps up. To design a professional sign-up page that will give your attendees a full experience related to your brand and services, just hit the Design New Template button. Doing so will whisk you off to our page builder brimming with useful functionalities. At this point, we recommend choosing the registration page designed to register your participants. After you name the page at the top of the screen, you'll find elements on the right that will help you tailor the look of your registration page to your liking. You can play around with one of the three available layouts change the background color, insert a background image, or a standalone picture. It's also available to add text, a video from YouTube or Vimeo, a link, your meeting agenda, additional documents, or even an empty segment that gives you control over the content and layout of the elements on the page. When you're happy with the result, all you need to do is click the Save and Exit button in the upper right-hand corner and confirm your decision. Then, you'll be taken back to the Event Setup screen. Plus, in the webinar configuration panel, you can connect tracking codes to your events from services such as Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, Facebook Pixel, LinkedIn, as well as your own codes. And these tools will give you more precise tracking of your events effectiveness. We encourage you to discover our platform and gain experience that can enhance your potential to create paid webinars. For now though, let's focus on crafting your first perfect event. Let's head over to the security tab. In this tab, you can opt for additional room protections. A password provides an extra layer of security requiring participants to enter it to access the event. The coding belt is a great tool to protect your content from unauthorized recording of the meeting. It's a watermark that shows up on the event screen at a specific time intervals. Tokens, on the other hand, are unique identifiers that can be assigned to specific participants and further increase the security of your meetings. By exploring these options, you gain the opportunity to boost the level of protection for your event, which is especially crucial when hosting large-scale webinars. Now, let's delve into the Advanced Settings tab in the Live Webinar platform. Here, you can influence a lot of factors that will determine how your webinar will look and run. Let's consider which audio modes your webinar should start in. You have four options to choose from. The first one, which is set by default, is the Presentation mode. This is the most common solution for webinars. It allows the presenter or host of the event to present with camera and microphone access. Meanwhile, the audience usually only observes and can communicate via chat or Q&A mode, which we'll talk about in the next edition of our course. The second most popular mode is the discussion mode. Here, all participants have access to their cameras and microphones and can decide when and how they want to join the conversation. This is particularly useful during panel discussions or group talks with the number of participants is small, and the meeting atmosphere fosters a free exchange of views. The third option is the raise hand mode. This is very similar to the presentation mode. The presenter or host can freely share their knowledge and participants have the opportunity to use the raise hand button. It's then up to the presenter whether he wants to give the floor to that person. This is particularly handy during debates or live Q&A sessions. The fourth mode is the classroom setting. This is especially handy when you're using live webinar to run educational sessions. Next up in the advanced settings tab is the room layout template selection. Here you can decide where on the screen you want the camera preview, presentation preview or chat to appear. 
Additionally, you have the freedom to determine if the room should be tailored for webinars when the presentation is the main event, or perhaps you'd prefer a setting where participants can freely see each other, which gives the room a popular feel, just like other online communicational tools. Other initial settings worth considering includes disabling the knock button, fill in URL for a direction page after the webinar ends, or initiating automatic camera and microphone selection for all participants. You can also manage chat, create private chats, display participants' locations in the list, and show information about the devices they're connecting from. You might also want to decide whether or not to provide participants with a list of everyone attending the event. Remember, any changes you make need to be confirmed by clicking the green update button. Congratulations, your first event is all set up. Now all that's left is to promote it appropriately and invite your participants. You can do this in several ways. Email invitations are most common, but you can also spread the event link in your network or community, allowing people to sign up and attend the event. Thank you very much for your time and we encourage you to watch the next tutorial, which will show how to manage your webinar room.